Hi, welcome to the Lone Star Dowsers. I'm Mary Lindsay Wilson, your program director, and we have Gandhari Balingi. Um, and yeah, can you believe it's January 2023? It's amazing how fast time seems to be passing. Um, well, I'm sure we're all really curious as to what's happening this year because so much has been happening over the last couple of years. Um, and we are in for a treat. Um, tonight, our guest is a, a dear friend and professional astrologer, Gandhari Balingi. Um, she's currently serving in the Houston area um, Astrological Society. She's on the board. Um, she's been doing astrology since 1999. Um, she offers spiritual life path readings to help clarify important decisions about your life cycles, health, career, and relationships. She enjoys teaching classes and giving astrology talks. And she also offers 30 years of experience as a registered massage therapist and Reiki master since 2001. She's well-versed in healing techniques ranging from deep tissue massage, aromatherapy, and reflexology. She also does cranial sacral therapy and universal energy clearing and chakra balancing. She's got all the energy fields covered. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'm going to um, introduce our, our, our speaker tonight, Gandhari. Um, make sure everybody can see her. Hi there. Hi, everybody. We've got a we've got a great group tonight. They're from all over. So how many people we've got on, on board? Um, we've got 16 so far. We've got some people here um, in person, which is always so nice. And um, anyway, well, let's get started. I know we've got a lot of um, a lot of juicy topics to cover tonight. Yes, and I wanted to. Um, I didn't realize that this was going to be mostly online. Or I would have emailed you the handout because I've got oh I've got the handout right here. I'm going to send it to Mary. I don't know if it's. Too I late to um, Emily is our um, our share technology screen. person. Share screen person. <clears throat> no. Um, oh, you want to share screens? I can send this to you via email, and then you can put it in share screen. Um. Okay. Is this your handout? Uh -huh. Is it pivotal for people to have tonight? Um, you know what we will email because we can email it with the um with the replay yes and so. just make sure that we have your email address so that we can get this to you yes so if they if they they're on yes, tonight it is i like um to have things visual so we have visuals um to help us with and would you um make sure that you each have a handout oh, um <laughs> <Yeah>. thank you <laughs> Mindy has a beautiful puppy on her on her lap, <laughs> so she can't move because her puppy comes first. And I know about this because I have three kitties, and they come first when I'm at home. They rule. So. Um, okay, so I um, Gandhari's got a lot of information that she's going to share. But if you guys have questions, um, those of you that are watching from home, if you would put them in the chat, and we will get to questions um, a little bit later. So, yes, without okay. further ado, how about it? <laughs> Thank you for, um, for having me. I'm going to move a little closer to Mary. Um, and I'm going to take my jacket off because now I'm a little warm. <laughs> we are going to, the, the theme for 2023, there are, there are um, a couple of themes that I'm going to go with tonight. The first one is personal empowerment leads to collective freedom. Personal empowerment leads to collective freedom. And then um, the second big theme to help us in our personal empowerment is adaptability. Going with the flow. It's gonna be really important because change is our friend. We are still in massive times of change. Uh, the flavor of the change is different now that we're in 2023. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how it's different, guys, because it is different. And in a way, it's very nicely different because in 2020 and 2021 
and 2022, we had, but particularly 2020 through 2021, we had a lot of Capricorn energy, a lot of intense top-down hierarchical, this is the way you do things, control mechanisms telling us where to go and how to be and how not to be and all of that stuff, right? And um, <clears throat> some people did better with that than others. I personally didn't like it at all. <laughs> so, so I had to really work with um, calming down my nervous system so that I wouldn't have anxiety because I have, I'm a Taurus and I love to touch people, right? Whether it's energy work or um, body work or inspiring your heart, touching through inspiration, right? So for me, being with people is important, right? And my and my my moon, my emotional body is in Sagittarius, and that means I like to move. I like to move. So you cannot tell me to stay in a little box. It doesn't work. <laughs> I think a lot of us experienced that over the last few years. Felt very restricted, and um, we didn't have the type of connection and physical contact that we want and need That's so right. please tell us that this year will be, this year be different <laughs> now if you have gotten through the first um what is it the 18th the first 18 days of january actually if you've gotten through today's the, last, the 19th the it's i think it's the 18th but anyway That's the 18th Staying correct. <laughs> <laughs> if we've gotten through the last three weeks and we're still healthy and we're upright and we're envisioning how we're going to move forward, we have done a fabulous job because Mercury retrograde, Mercury <laughs> retrograde started like the day after Christmas. <laughs> so how many people were stranded in airports, right? Not only was Mercury communication and getting from A to B to C, little points, A to B to C, Mercury, retrograde, and Capricorn structures, so airports were full of people who were stranded, but also Mars has been retrograde. Mars has been retrograde. Mars action, the fire, our passion has been retrograde since October. That's a long time to be having our forward momentum going backward. Now, that's kind of an illusion when we look in the heavens and we see that little red planet twinkling because you can see it with the naked eye. Um, to say that it's going backwards, what's actually happening with Mercury and Mars when they are retrograde, meaning they are parallel to Earth's orbit exactly. They're very, very close to the Earth. And that means that the energy is more intense. I think we can all agree the energy has been very intense. <laughs> and Mars in particular has been retrograde in Mercury's sign of Gemini, day-to-day -day communication and being able to think clearly. So how many of us have felt like we've been in a fog? Oh, I don't want to think about that. I don't have the energy for it anyway. I'll think about it tomorrow, maybe, right? So it has been crunch time for the last month, let's say. And um, we've had to undergo lots of um, moving obstacles or moving around obstacles or jumping over obstacles in order to get family together for the holidays or not, you know, in order to get appointments made because of all the technological things that have gone on now. So many people can't get a doctor's appointment because they have so many hoops to go through. You know, it takes them forever to, to get an actual human being on the other line to say, yes, you can come in, right? So <clears throat> it has been a bit frustrating, shall we say, since the holidays. Well, guess what? Today, Mercury went direct. Yay! Yay! <laughs> and on the 12th, which was last week, Mars went direct. <laughs> so now we have thinking processing speaking and action okay. moving forward yay so here we are it's not even the chinese new year yet the chinese new year is on the 22nd right yeah the lunar new year yes the lunar new year and 
our, my wonderful friend, Catherine Ashby, is going to be giving the talk on the new Lunar New Year next month. In February, in yes, February. for so you dowsers. So tune in for that and come. Um, I will be here for that because it's an important, oh my God, this is one of the most important threshold years that we will ever be in in our entire lives. Yeah. So you're going to have to yeah. talk more about that. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Pluto. Pluto is going into Aquarius. Yay, what does that mean? Aquarius, right? <laughs> Um, yes. Well, okay. <clears throat> Pluto has been in Capricorn structure, authority, people saying this is the way it's always been. We have to follow tradition, right? Um, now that's the negative part of Pluto in power control issues. But Pluto and Capricorn is also <clears throat> lineage, you know, ancestry, um, knowing our roots, knowing, knowing, um, where we come from and how we want to carry that legacy forward. So, so Capricorn can be the mountain goat reaching the zenith of the mountain. You know, it, it, it has really positive aspects to it. But at the beginning of 2020, we all experienced this major car crash, like a pileup of planets all in Capricorn. And that pileup hadn't happened since the 1500s. <laughs> so uh, with the Protestant revolution and, and um, Henry VIII saying, off with your head, <laughs> I'm going to do it my way, right? So, so we made it through modern day, complete shutdown of the way things had always been. Now, part of that was meant, well, maybe a large part of that was manufactured. You know, <laughs> manufactured. Maybe. And I have to say that one way or another, this would have happened anyway. Yeah. Because of the, the pileup of planets in Capricorn bringing everything on the planet to a halt. Now, the good part of that is that we slowed down. We stopped getting in our cars to go someplace every single minute. We took a walk to take a breath. Right. Some of us actually started meditating more and getting in tune with spirit more. Um, or becoming a couch potato. Or becoming a couch <laughs> potato and you know, eating yummies while we're watching TV. But but the the main thing is that we began to feel the rhythm of Gaia. We began to feel the heartbeat of the planet that we live on. So even though the outer control issues have been extremely frustrating and heartbreaking sometimes, you know, the loved ones who, who died isolated in, you know, COVID wards, heartbreaking stuff. One of uh, my, my brother-in-law was, a, was a, um, a nurse on a COVID ICU ward for two years before his body gave out. And he's just a year younger than I am. So there were some real serious heartbreaks during that period. And also because we stopped and each person individuated their own reason for being again, like I had to go, you know, why am I here? You know, if I, if I can't do my passion, why am I here, right? So we all had our inner powwows with, you know, spirit, all that is going, what the hell? <laughs> Did I sign up for this? Right? <laughs> you know, and hopefully three years into it, we have come to uh, some understanding of, okay, now I have a feeling of what it is that I want to do and be moving forward. Right? I have a little bit more inspiration. I have a little bit more energy. I will say, I don't know that I think everybody really um, has... I can speak for myself, a clearer picture of what they want to do, go moving forward. But I think we all agree that what's been happening is not working. Um, so many systems and um, uh, way things have been done are not sustainable. They're, they're not, they, they don't work. They are broken, you know, and I think we're all very aware that we've got a very broken system and that 
yes, I would like to be part of the change, implementing change um, going forward because, yeah, <laughs> the other yeah. one doesn't work. Yeah. And so I just pulled up Mary's chart. <laughs> Um, and we'll get to that. I wanted, um, I'm glad that her chart was right there for me to be able to see on my computer. I had volunteered to be her guinea pig to give you all examples of what, um, when she's describing something that she can have a, a, a real person and explain things. So, okay. So the first thing I want to address is we just got through very intense mercury retrograde in Capricorn. And this brought up anxious feelings about oh no not again is is the thumb gonna screw us again right and and i want you to know no it isn't it's not the same flavor it's mercury taking a look because mercury it's about our perception right so mercury taking a look at how we have dealt with power and empowerment up to now <clears throat> right so I don't know about you, but I feel more empowered to make my own decisions, regardless of what the powers of be out there tell me. Right. So I don't just jump through a hoop because somebody tells me to. And I, I think I this group like, of dowsers would probably fall into that category. Right. Now it can be it can be really scary. I mean, a friend just said I thought I was going to die during this period. Um, and I have, I just got a text from two colleagues. One <clears throat> fell and broke her arm last week and has a cold. And the other has serious back problems and doesn't know if she can work for a while. Okay, and yes. And so, uh, so accidents can happen under mercury retrograde under normal circumstances, but with mercury retrograde in Capricorn, Capricorn rules are bones. It rules our skeletal structure. <clears throat> and so being able to take clear steps and know that your feet are landing where they're supposed to land is you know, really important. And so I would say that even though Mercury has gone direct today, it's not up to full speed yet and it won't be until March. So still be very careful, be very careful getting on a ladder. Oh, I can do that. I had a, I had a client who was 80 something because <clears throat> I'm blessed to to work on people who are older and actually I actually really love it she she can run circles around me except that during this period she got up on a step ladder and she started to fall backwards and she caught herself but she had a stress stress factor in her shin so it's really slowed her down right so it's important to allow us ourselves to slow down even though we have been confined and sort of held back for such a long period of time. Believe me, when we get to March, it's going to be full speed ahead like lightning. So if there is time still that you feel like, I'm not sure if I should make that decision. I'm not sure if I really want to talk to that person right now, because when I talked to them last week, they were yelling at me. You know, I mean, there are going to be moments when you're going to pause and go, mm, I don't, you know, but there's this, well, I should, right? I should make it. No. <clears throat> One of the most powerful things we can do this year, and particularly right now, coming out of this retrograde, is pause and listen to our intuition. Follow our gut. Trust our inner knowing. This is going, this has saved me time and again. It's really important right now. If we can pause when we know we need to take a breath, you know, when we're about to be confronted with somebody <clears throat> who may be unpleasant because they're not getting their needs met or they're asking you to get their needs met and you just don't have the time or the energy for it, right? Then pause and go, okay, how can I say this? kindly right or or to use one of our things what's the most benevolent outcome <laughs> what's the most benevolent outcome for all concerned not just myself right so um so as long as we do that coming out of this mercury retrograde period is going to be a relief it already feels like a relief to me today felt like a relief it's like oh my goodness 
the first part of the day because mercury didn't actually it's funny i can feel energy and i'm sure most of us but by, well of course you work with it daily <laughs> people right um can feel energy shifts and the first part of the day felt really heavy you know and i was tired last yesterday in particular i was so tired oh my goodness but I woke up feeling a little bit better. And then I thought, you know what? I need to go for a walk. I don't know if I have time to go for a walk, but I need to go for a walk. So I, I let myself go for a walk and then it shifted. The energy shifted, I shifted. Was it around 11? Yeah, so that it was around 11 o'clock, 11, 12 o'clock and, and Mercury shifted, right? It was like, okay, green light. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew if I stayed in my head and made myself push that it wouldn't serve me and it wouldn't serve you guys. So just listen to what the body needs moving forward. And that's going to be for the rest of the year because Mercury will go retrograde three more times this year. We're blessed with four Mercury retrogrades for 2023. And um, it goes retrograde in Taurus next in the spring mm -hmm. april 15th through may 20th and taurus i am a taurus taurus is all about personal needs um being met you know do i have food do i have a roof over my head do i have comfortable clothes on you know do i have time for a nap <laughs> do i have someone to hug do i have a fur baby to love on you know that's taurus <laughs> And um, and so Mercury retrograde in Taurus is going to be helping us reevaluate: Are we getting our needs met? Okay, and it's also about personal resources and finances. And that I'm going to come back to that because the in April and May there's a reset financially, so it's important for us to not overspend this year. We're going to be tempted because suddenly the, the doors are opening and there are all these opportunities that are coming and, and it's like, yes, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. You know, I already went through that actually the last few weeks. And um, it was amazing how many opportunities that I thought were there suddenly just kind of crashed and burned. <laughs> it's like, I'm so glad I didn't go for that, but I actually did go for one opportunity that just oh my God, the crash and burn was, was intense. And it, and it involved other people. And I felt so bad, but it turned out okay in the end. We're, we're still okay. Um, but when we move forward too quickly, which is the tendency because Jupiter, the social planet, the, the benevolent mentor, Jupiter is in Aries now. Through, through, through April, Jupiter's in Aries. And so it's like, okay, the starting gate has opened and the stallion is running, right? So Jupiter wants us to go for these wonderful opportunities. And suddenly I'm feeling passionate again. Suddenly I'm feeling inspired again. You know, Jupiter went into Aries and I went, oh, I want to sing. I haven't sang for the whole pandemic. So I, I, I called my, I talked to my choir director at church at Unity and I said, would it be okay if I came just for Christmas? And he said, sure, show up on Monday, <laughs> you know? So Jupiter in Aries is, is lighting our fire again. And I have to say, Jupiter in Aries squares Mercury moving slowly in Capricorn right now. So once again, just be mindful of the pace that you're going to go forward with just one step at a time, mindfully. And then, then as we get into, hi, then as we, as we get into March, things are really going to start moving in a lovely speed. And I want you to visualize getting ready for a, a trip through the rapids in a rubber raft with your life vest on and your helmet on and you've already done the lessons with the guide so you know how where to put your paddle so that you can get around these rocks because 
it's going to go really fast and it's going to feel kind of choppy sometimes. And, um, and we need to, to work out to get ready for how fast it's going to go. Okay. So Jupiter in Aries typically means what? Okay. Other than forward motion, right? That, that we have the energy and the, the enthusiasm and the passion to move forward. Well, miss Jupiter in Aries. <laughs> <laughs> Mary has Jupiter in Aries. I can't read that, never mind. Um, Jupiter in Aries is Aries is the first of three fire signs. There's Aries, which is the personal fire, my personal fire being lit. Okay. I'm just, just these songs are playing in my head. Come on, baby, let me. <laughs> <laughs> in a social setting in a not club with lots of you know glitter balls right okay uh jupiter in leo would be the heart's passion how do i shine my heart in a social way because jupiter is the social planet okay so um okay wait i can't get the disco thing out of the aries thing you got to give me a different um uh, visual (laughs) (laughs) um Okay, here it is. Jupiter in Aries is someone who wants to to um, forge a path in your own individual way. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Aries is about my way. How does it work for me? Moving, moving forward as quickly as possible, please. Yesterday is better. <laughs> okay okay leo is more about leo leo right leo is more about you know my heart's desire what what makes my heart light up you know what gives me warmth and 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 feeling of like she she probably has a significant amount of something in leo and it may be jupiter because she has this beautiful i'm I'm looking at mindy mindy has this beautiful home with lovely art and um, the Christmas tree has still got its wonderful lights on it. And so there's lots of decoration and it feels very sparkly in here. Um, that's kind of a Jupiter and Leo setting. And our Jupiter in um, Sagittarius, which is Jupiter's natural sign, is about shooting for the stars. It's about you know um, allowing yourself to go for the highest and the best. Go big or go home. Yeah, that was probably said by a Jupiter and Sag person. That's right. Go bigger <laughs> home. That's right. And so Jupiter and Aries um, is wonderful right now for the beginning of the year because it's like, what do I want? How do I want to make a difference in society? Right. And and what um, what is my way to do that, regardless of what other people think? Because all this Capricorn energy, Pluto, the the power planet, power, life, death, and rebirth planet is still in high Capricorn. So we still have the powers that be telling us what's best for us, you know, and Jupiter and Aries is like, uh uh-uh, maybe, but I have to think about it, right? So Jupiter is really helping us clarify what's what's my truth because jupiter is about what's the truth the high truth with a capital t what's the truth about this okay does that make sense absolutely right so we're no longer i think most of us stopped accepting the (laughs) the 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 news yeah the narrative um a while back but now it's even more clear you know what what is my truth that's right what is my truth and so um, when Mercury goes retrograde in Earth, you know, in Taurus in the spring, it's about personal resources, personal physical well-being, okay, personal health, um, and also food. Is, is, is the food supply chain working? Or is there some kind of breakdown in food? Have I invested in community gardens in my neighborhood? Right. So it's it's the kind of thing to start thinking about now, because with Pluto going into Aquarius for the first time in our life. Well, no. Is that right? Yeah. For the first time in our lifetime, Pluto is going into Aquarius. Um, 
it squares and squares a 90 degree harsh angle. It squares Taurus. It squares Leo. Uh, it, it opposes Leo and it squares Scorpio. So there's this tension between my needs versus your needs, my resources versus your resources. And um, what is best for the collective? Is that really best for me? So there's going to be a dynamic tension this year with the fixed signs about personal resources and personal needs that is going to be very strong for the first half of the year. Um, and part of the reason that is, is that the nodes, the North node and the South node, which is points of collective consciousness. The South node is where we have come from in our consciousness the past traditions and the tribe that we have come from collectively and wherever our north and south node is in our chart that is where our personal tribe is and where our personal north node what we are aspiring to integrate consciously this this lifetime okay the nodes are in taurus scorpio they have been all last year yeah taurus Taurus North Node. So the good news is that you've been, uh, Catherine, you've been in a period where the node in the heaven matches your North, north Node. So if, can I tell them what Spirit said about the car? Okay. So she just said uh, before we started, Spirit told me to get a new car. So I got a new car. That is a Taurus North Node thing. It's like some, I need a resource that's sustainable, that is reliable, that is beautiful because it's Taurus and she's a Libra. So you have to have beauty, right? <laughs> and, um, and even though it's going to cost money, it's going to benefit me in the long run, right? It's going to benefit me immediately, but it'll be something that I can have to depend upon. Okay. Taurus is what is it wants immediate needs met and the south note in scorpio is will it sustain me for a long time will it sustain me for the rest of my life and if my resources don't match what is sustainable over the long term i need to make some changes okay and a lot of us have already gone through some significant changes in the last couple of years but it really kind of came to a head last year with um with where the nodes were um and the reason it came to a head last year is because uranus the lightning bolt changes is in taurus and in the middle of last year uranus met that north node in taurus and shook things up and so those you know my friend said you know i i took me forever to move but i finally moved right it's because that uranus hit your north node it's like, okay, it's time. So it's important to know that the nodes are now in lower degrees of Taurus and Scorpio, which is affecting me because my son is in low Taurus. <laughs> and when Pluto, life, death, transformation, and rebirth finishes Capricorn and moves into Aquarius on March 23rd, it's going to stay at zero Aquarius for March and April, and then go back into Capricorn. So it's really only, only going to be there for a little bit of time before it goes back into Capricorn for the summer. It's really significant that Pluto is going to be at zero degrees uh, for about six weeks, it's because the zero degree point of any of any sign is the first burst of that energy, the purest burst of that energy. So for better or worse, we're going to get to really see the raw, unfiltered Aquarian vibe. When is this? March 23rd is when it starts. Hold on to your hats in March. <laughs> Now, in some ways, for those of us who have been waiting for the age of Aquarius to finally get here, <laughs> it's like, woohoo, let's put on a party hat and go, right? Um, and there are also going to be people who are feeling disconnected 
because of the square to the nodes. The square, and I, I will send you the, the uh, handout so that you have an idea of when that pivotal point is. But I will tell you that there is a point where there's going to be some jagged edges and resources are going to be um, questionable. Like, can I get to my resources, right? Because there's been a lot of rumors about the banking industries and that we're moving to digital and that there's a lot of conversation about that. There is conversation and, and it's appropriate timing for that. Um, Pluto enters Aquarius on March 23rd. It stations retrograde. And whenever a station planet is either retrograde or direct, that's when it's really the closest to the earth and has the most intensity, okay? It stations retrograde at zero Aquarius on May 1st. May 1st, we're in Taurus time, that's Taurus sun, okay? So in April, you know what happens in April, everybody's you know looking at their finances. And then, um, and then Pluto stations retrograde on May 1st in Aquarius and the, and the nodes of the moon are on April 20th, the nodes of the moon are in um, a square with the sun and the moon, it's called an eclipse. We have a total eclipse in Tor new moon eclipse in Taurus. Okay, and that eclipse is on the north node. So in a way, it's like, okay, I've made this big change. Now what? <laughs> because of the square to Pluto, we're going to be, you know, yeah, I got here, I got here, I got here. Uh-oh. There's going to be something that doesn't work, right? There's going to be some um, kink in the system that's gonna to have to be rewired because Aquarius rules electricity. It rules electric currents. So there may be some electronic things that go haywire for that particular eclipse. So I would say, you know, when we um, were going through that pivotal time with Mars conjunct the North Node in Taurus conjunct Uranus, which happened mid-year last year, I told everybody, have cash on hand, just in case the, AT, the ATMs may not be working, you know? And, um, and so- just Fill your car up. <laughs> fill your car up, have cash on hand. It's only gonna be for a short period of time, but it may be a crucial period of time for you if you need to get somewhere and you don't, you know, um, the pump at the gas station isn't working. So, during that that pivotal point around April 20th, have gas in your car, have cash on hand, make sure that you have a little bit of extra food in the pantry, just in case. I have no idea what's going to happen or not happen, but I do know that when we have an eclipse, it's you can rely on there's going to be some kind of hype, you know? There's going to be some kind of jargon about be afraid of this. And it's probably nothing to be afraid of on a personal level, but it's important that we feel that we have our resources taken care of. I have taken care of what I need. And therefore, I know no matter what, it's going to be okay. Right? So it's just one of those points that you have to be extra careful. And that's, that's one point this year that you just, you know, you need to be a little bit prepared. The other point that is the second total new, new moon eclipse, the sun and the moon together in a sign, square Pluto. <laughs> this is a different flavored eclipse. This is in October, October 14th. Yes, for Librans. So interesting that the first eclipse in April is Taurus. The second eclipse in October is Libra. They both ruled by Venus. So this year, Venus, you know, what I love, beauty, harmony, balance. That second eclipse is about, is there balance in my life? Is there harmony in my relationships? 
who is throwing, uh, you know, throwing a lead ball into my beautiful garden? You know, I mean, really, because the Pluto will back up into Capricorn and not move into Aquarius again until 2024. So we're finishing up at the end of the year, we're finishing up, except for a tiny little glimpse in the fall of 2024, we're finishing up Pluto and Capricorn. So we're finishing up our relationship, our collective relationship with tradition and how things have always been and how things should be. You know, that whole thing about top-down authority. We're, we're completing it, folks. Now, in the 1700s, because we are in the U.S.'s Pluto return, the U.S.'s chart, July 4th, 1776, in Philadelphia, um, Pluto is at 27 degrees Capricorn in the second house of the US's resources. So why is it that we are so protective of our resources? Why do we carry a big stick? We have Mercury in Cancer opposite that Pluto in Capricorn. We carry a big stick to protect our resources. <laughs> That's the, the bob of the country, right? And so um, this whole year and last year, Pluto has been going back and forth over that 27 degree point. In the fall, when Pluto moves direct um, in mid-October, Pluto moves direct, it's gonna be at that 27 degree point for the last time in our lifetime. So is that a time to expect big changes? Big changes, all of the, all of the, um, <laughs> uh, chaos in our government is going to come to uh, another head at that point because it's an eclipse. It's a new moon eclipse, 21 degrees Libra, and um, it is conjunct the south node in Libra at that time. The nodes are going to switch from Taurus Scorpio to Aries Libra. And, the, and in the second part of the year, the north node is going to be in Aries. How to move forward, individual with individual empowerment versus South Node, how have I always done relationship, right? And then Pluto station, stationing to go direct at that pivotal 27 degree point is like, <clears throat> we're not doing it like this anymore. Let go. It's gone. It's over. Do something new. Do something different because it's going to crumble if you keep holding on to it. So it, it'll be, it'll be as one of my astrology teachers at Kim McSherry was fond of saying, she was a Scorpio. She was fond of saying, if you keep holding on, you're going to have bloody fingernails. <laughs> and that period of time in mid-October is one of those times where we must let go of certain relationships that just no longer serve us. Or systems. Or systems. Yeah. Because Pluto in Capricorn rules world governments. So I think we're going to see some some big change in our in our governments and world governments. I mean, we're we are already seeing it, but I think the the facade is coming down. <laughs> it's coming down, and um, just so that you know, um, fast forward to twenty twenty four, same time period. Pluto will move forward at 29 degrees Capricorn. It stays at 29 degrees Capricorn for just a little bit, just to give one final review right before the election. And, and then in, you know, at the end of 2024, it goes into, Pluto goes into Aquarius completely. So it's not yeah. going to be dull. It, no, this it's not going to be dull. If we signed up for this time period, we wanted to have a lot of um, activity. Okay, we have a question. Um, which four signs will be square to the North Node in the spring of 2023? Okay. Um, wanted you to repeat that. Mm -hmm. So in, 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 on April 20th, for that particular new moon in Taurus, it's definitely going to affect Taurus. So you know, I'm looking forward to the changes coming. <laughs> um, it's going to oppose Scorpio. Mm -hmm. It's going to square Leo. Mm -hmm. It's going to square Aquarius. But Aquarians have Pluto entering their sign. So I would say that Taurus Scorpio 
have a tendency to dig their heels in. <laughs> no, I'm not stubborn. I'm, a, I'm an exception to the rule. <laughs> Lie. <laughs> um, we cannot dig our heels in with Pluto whacking us with a big pad paddle. Okay, so it's like lean into, at this point, change. We're, we know it's coming. Lean into the vibration. We're all dowsers here. We all use our pendulums. Be proactive with it. Okay. I want to, I, you know, I have this, I have this direction or I have this direction. So use your pendulum. What feels right for me today? Now, what feels right for me today may feel different in April. So be allowing and adaptable to what works for me today may not work for me next month. Mm -hmm. And what about Aquarius and Leo, the other part of that square? Um, okay. <laughs> Pluto, Pluto is going to give you a cosmic goose. <laughs> Talk a little bit about how your life has changed in the last month or two. <laughs> because Pluto in Aquarius, my dear, is in your fourth house of home and family and the seat of your soul. So deep rooted changes are happening and you know it and it's, and it's opposite your son. So your son is in the 10th house of career. How has your career changed and how is it already continuing to change? It is changing and evolving. And I have let go of so many identities and ego and all that kind of stuff. So I can be open and available for new and what presents, um, a little uncomfortable <laughs> and she's, she's uh, but i am enjoying the change <laughs> yeah, you are enjoying the change yeah. are yeah. you in, are you enjoying the wonderful um yeah the, the, i'm i'm enjoying being around people more i mean it's just different it's just different and it i feel like it's opening new things i have i kind of keep going i can't believe i'm here um <laughs> so anyway you know, why am i here what what is this about you know had would not have imagined myself here. So anyway, but it's where I need to be now. Um, and that became really clear. So. And um, your Venus. Okay, so this is important. You keep asking about relationships. Uh, first of all, it's the relationship with yourself because your Venus is a zero Leo. Remember that, that zero degree point is such a powerful point because it's the purest essence of that sign. Okay, so I mean, look at, Mary looks like a Leo. She's got Venus in zero Leo and her son's in Leo and she shines her light. And what is, what is the name of your company? Live Beautifully. Living Beautifully, yes. So, so, your Venus in zero Leo is going to be, um, gosh, what's a good analogy for that with Pluto at zero Aquarius opposite your Venus? You're going to be shifted cosmically. It's like suddenly she's on this magic carpet ride and she's off to a new adventure and she didn't even know it was coming. <laughs> kind of feels like that. <laughs> Work-wise, for sure, yeah. Definitely work is, is pivotal with that because the Pluto is in the fourth house. Now, also, it's going to change the dynamics with your family, but you've already been noticing that. Right, right, right. My roles are changing. Um, that's that part of those identities that I'm shutting and, and letting go of. Um, I mean, it's just shifting. It's everything changes. And isn't it a little bit intimidating and a little bit scary when it comes up? Like, oh, sure. Well, my, my daughter got married, um, this summer and, um, she's an adult. She has her own house. She hosted Christmas. You know what I mean? It's been my responsibility or I've made it my responsibility for the last, I don't know, most of my life, I'll just say. And it was really different to, to be a guest, you know, and to have my daughter host. It was wonderful and it was different, you know. So, um, you know, my my role is changing. I've raised this beautiful, independent daughter who is, you know, wanting to, you know, create traditions and take over the reins of, of different things. So it's all wonderful. It's just, it's just different. <laughs> 
But I have to say, uh, Mary, just to, to kind of bring it to a, a nice vignette here, Jupiter in Aries in your chart in the seventh house, um, you're going through your Jupiter return. And um, Jupiter is, let me just be exact about it. Jupiter is going to be on your Jupiter. It, it, Jupiter just entered Aries, so it's going to be um, by the spring, by April. By April, Jupiter is on your Jupiter in the seventh house of what? Partnership. <laughs> <laughs> so there are positive changes coming in all kinds of partnerships in Mary's life. And one of the things I, you know, I've been, um, before I became an astrologer, um, I had dear friends who were astrologers. And what I've noticed through all these years is that the timing in, in astrology is impeccable. If you know how to read the signs, it just helps so much with timing. And, you know, Mary also was going through her second Saturn return, Saturn in Aquarius was on her Saturn. And I kept saying, it's like being in a desert <laughs> without any water. The oasis isn't, you know, it, it's evaporating in front of you. And, <laughs> you know, it's, this is really, this is really not fun. But once you get through that dry oasis, it's going to feel so juicy. And it's already starting to feel a little bit juicy, isn't it? I will say last two years, hardest years in a very long time in adulthood, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. So now I feel like whew, things are starting to shift and I've just released attachment to pretty much everything. Um <laughs> So Except yeah, your beautiful jewelry. She's got beautiful jewelry on, nice, lovely turquoise. I love Thanks. that. <laughs> Thanks. Living beautifully. All right. So our our seventh house and partnerships is that for everybody or just for? No, that's um, where Jupiter and Aries is in her chart. So, um, wherever I mean, the natural wheel begins with Aries. So one of the important things to know is that Jupiter has a twelve year cycle, and it begins with Aries and ends with Pisces. Okay, so last year, Jupiter finished up Pisces. And one of the things I kept saying to people in the fall when Jupiter was together with Neptune, which is still in Pisces, is take time to go on retreat. Take time to be near water. Take time to do a deep spiritual dive because we will never see Jupiter together with Neptune and Pisces again in our lifetime. So there was a magical time in the fall of last year, not last year, with that Pisces conjunction of Jupiter, the beneficent mentor with Neptune, divine love. You know, and um, I personally had <laughs> kind of a hard time getting to that divine love um, moment because so much had fallen apart. <laughs> In, in, um, in, you know, over the last three years, and I was still feeling pretty tired. So that's why I decided, you know what, you need to do things that make you feel joy again, whether it's singing or, or, you know, playing with animals or whatever it is, go play, go do something joyful. And as soon as Jupiter went into Aries, I started to feel it again. It's like, yeah, I can do this. I can play again. I can get in touch with my inner child. So that's the truth for everybody. Really, we, re we really need to be finding our joy and experiencing that on a ideally daily basis, right? Yes, daily <laughs> like, basis. Yeah. Just the joy of going for what it is we desire again. Because for so long, we couldn't move. And now we can, right? And, and uh, we have the freedom to choose. And the truth is, we've always had the freedom to choose, but some of us forgot for a while, yeah. right? Yeah. And now it's like, oh yeah, personal empowerment. So let's talk a little bit about personal empowerment. Um, it's going to get really juicy when um, when Uranus in Taurus meets up with Jupiter and Taurus. Jupiter is going to head into Taurus in the later spring. 
and Jupiter, once it leaves Aries, it's going to want to manifest the goals that we've been really driving to achieve. You know, it's it's one thing to think about things that I want to to um, accomplish and to plan for things that I want to accomplish. But Taurus wants bread on the table. Yeah. Where are the results? Give me the money, honey. Right. And Jupiter and Taurus, people who have Jupiter and Taurus, they are so lucky with money. It's amazing to watch them. They always have enough money in the bank. Unless there's a, a really major square, you know, to that to that Jupiter and Taurus, they are always people who land on their feet. Right. So Jupiter and Taurus is a great time for building resources. And Jupiter and Taurus um, is, a, is going to be an abundant time. So this is potentially a very abundant year, much more abundant than we've seen in quite a while. Just be practical with our decisions, knowing that there will be times when there are chinks in the supply chain and be prepared for that. But I don't think at all that we're in for another major crash. I don't believe that. I do believe that it's going to be hard to switch to the digital thing um, for some of us. You know, for some of us, it's like, I don't want to do digital all the time. Because what if, what if like the, the option of cash? <laughs> I like the option of cash. What if the satellite breaks down? You know, what if, what if um, the powers that be decide that a QR code, a QR code, you know, that, that thing that you click on now, it's a little gray box that you click on when you want to go to a concert or something. Yeah. Well, what if it's kind of like a microchip? And if everybody has a QR code, they can, they can figure out what, where you are and what you're doing with your money. C correct. So we need to maintain our sovereignty. So yes. Be the, um... really careful about trusting the system with your money. Be very, very careful with it. Now, do I think it's going to be a, an abundant year and then we can absolutely go for some financial success? Absolutely. Just be careful and don't trust the system to, to take care of you. Stay on it. Stay on top of what's happening with your resources. Well, I think, so just to recap, I heard you say that this will probably be a very, the we're getting the green light and that things are starting to really open up and move and that there will be more prosperity, more flow and probably Especially everybody's life, but then, but not to overdo. <laughs> it's so, it's, well, it's kind of like, you know, Bacchus, it's like Mardi Gras. I mean, I'm from New Orleans, Mardi Gras, you know, just go for it, blow it out, have a big party. And there will be moments where we'll be absolutely fine to have a big party and just blow it out. Um, but just know that if we do that too much, it will come back to bite us. Um, because guess what? Mercury starts to slow down at the end of May in Taurus and go retrograde to review how we're doing with our finances, right? Or actually it's in April, not in May. Let me get exact here, April 15th. <laughs> <laughs> well and that's yeah i think that's very ironic about the banking things well i know i i've been hearing that the irs is the thing that may not um be around too much longer so i think that's kind of interesting trust your consultants about what's the best when there was a question, do we file our taxes on time or do we file an extension? <laughs> and so she's saying, trust, trust your, your, I guess we can douse, we can ask questions and douse it. Financial <laughs> consultant. Um, just know that if you do file an extension, remember that that, that eclipse in October is going to be a humdinger. So, <laughs> um, so just be prepared, be prepared for the changes. They're going to be unexpected changes that happen between April and October and be prepared to adapt to whatever that chain changes. I am not a financial astrologer, but I am a Taurus. And I do say that it's very important to keep your hands on your money. Do not trust the powers that be. Do not trust the system. Now, if you already have a plan in place, if you already have a system that works for you, 
do trust your advisors because that's their job. You know, no, we're not going to completely lose our money. I, I don't believe in those kind of conspiracy theories. And believe me, I can feel it when something pinky that's really big is about to happen. Eh, no, not this year. Um, there are too many harmonious. This is the year of the water rabbit. It's a harmonious, sweet time. Now, there are going to be times that, you know, are, we're going to need to adjust and it's not going to feel so great. However, I think the overall theme is much sweeter, much kinder, much more harmonious than what we've experienced up until now. And my funk Hallelujah. expert over there is, is, is nodding her head. Yay! So this is a kinder year for all of us. Okay. Um, I know you've talked about a lot of good things. The um, A lot about Pluto, which is like huge change um and a lot about taurus isn't there a lot of things happening with saturn yeah that's that's a very good point mary i want before we go to saturn i just wanted to look up this important time with jupiter um jupiter and saturn okay we'll segue that way jupiter and saturn are doing a little dance together jupiter's in taurus earth and Saturn's in Pisces. So that would be expansion in Earth and Pisces is what feeling. Um... It's, it's the depths of our psyche. Okay. Um, now Saturn is not as comfortable in Pisces in certain ways because um, Saturn rules Capricorn boundaries. It rules the um the shore that holds the ocean okay neptune in pisces which is what we have now and have had for the last five years and will have for another couple of years neptune in pisces is the depths of the ocean it's the whale song okay so in some ways jupiter in taurus and saturn in pisces are going to be able to find equilibrium with what's an appropriate boundary for all of this emotion I'm feeling, right? There has been a lot of um, crossing of boundaries energetically with Neptune and now, now moving forward in high Pisces, the last 10 degrees of Pisces, we're all pretty psychically in tune. Oh, and I love it. The puppy just jumped up to say hi to Catherine right when I, right when I said that. And, and Saturn in Pisces adores animals. <laughs> in my handout, I said somebody who, has, and my, my niece has Saturn in Pisces. Somebody with Saturn in Pisces cannot leave an injured animal on the street or a, a hurting person. Um, and sure enough, she wanted to be a, a vet when she grew up and she worked in a vet clinic for many years. <laughs> She's now doing something in, about environmental um, awareness now, but that's still kind of Saturn in Pisces. I want to do something for the betterment of the whole Pisces, the whole world, right? So, but Saturn, Saturn is about boundaries and Pisces is about dissolving boundaries. So with Saturn moving into Pisces next month, it's going to be really important for us to notice when our boundaries are slipping. And when we start to, um, because we're softer and we're kinder and we're more psychic and we can feel people when we walk into a room more, right? It's going to be important to kind of go home and go, all right, is this mine or is it theirs? You know, it's going to be very, very important to douse and go, okay, am I courted? Am I holding this person's emotions because I feel so close to them? Okay. That's, that's going to be really, really important because. Courted means. Well, it means. Grow grounded. No. no. Courted means that somebody's energy is latching onto you. With that cord. Right. I was thinking of something else that right now Pluto that we be need to be grounded be really great for for cutting cutting away anything that is not 
serving us, right? Pluto and Aquarius is going to cut the crap. So, I mean, Pluto and Aquarius is going to bring clarity on a huge scale, right? And as a matter of fact, I just had this vision of the sky lighting up. <laughs> so, okay, when's that coming? March 23rd, Pluto and Aquarius. Now, it's only going to be there for a little bit before it goes back to the Capricorn, just for the beginning of the spring. But it's still going to light up the sky enough that we can see things on the horizon that we hadn't seen before because Pluto and Aquarius uncovers what's been hidden. Pluto and Capricorn has suppressed and hidden documents and what in the news, all the stuff about hidden documents, right? Pluto and Aquarius is going to blow that box right open. Right, right. It feels very government directed to me. Yes, the all the... the, the... Right? misinformation all um, this information is going to come to light now not immediately because pluto moves very slowly and this is only zero degrees aquarius we go into a little bit more because pluto only moves three degrees a year pluto is going to be in aquarius for 21 years yeah i can see that things will be slowly slowly changing and 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 unearthing which is probably a good thing because if everything happened all at one time that might be a whole lot to take yeah well it would be too shocking for our nervous system because aquarius not only rules electricity it also rules our subtle nervous system so we don't really want too many shocks all at once (laughs) no (laughs) but although it may be a shock I tend to think it's probably a good thing because think about how you use a map. If you don't know where you are, you cannot use a map. You mm-hmm. cannot figure out how to get from here to there. So that's right. this will help show us where we are on the map <laughs> right? And, and where we need to go. And particularly in um, the, the end of March and the beginning of April, when we're in Aries time, the sun is in Aries. And Pluto's in Aquarius. Oh my goodness. It's going to be go for the gold, honey. So when you say go for the gold, is that like go for your dreams, your desires, yes. the job, the the trip, the whatever, just yes. <laughs> yes. play the lotto, just go for it. Just go for it. Uh, do, do remember that Mercury is going to start slowing down. Okay, wait, I want to hear that date one more time. When do we need to go for it? Go for the gold. <laughs> At the end, at the, um, let's see. Yeah, at the end of March. Okay. And, and into April you heard it May. here. <laughs> but just remember that we're going to have a reality check on April 20th when Mercury goes retrograde in Taurus. It's going to be a financial and resources and values reality check. And then we get to reconsider the choices that we've made make adjustments because Mercury retrograde isn't bad. It just means reevaluate, adjust, um, and redefine and move forward perhaps in a slightly different direction. Okay. So Mercury moves direct on May 14th. Okay. And a lot will have shifted by then. And so it's important for us to, let's say we have planned a trip to Costa Rica, you know, Um, I would say be very careful about going to Costa Rica um the first the last week in april and the first two weeks in may if we've never been there retrogrades are a time a wonderful time to go back to a beautiful place that you've always been and you know how to get there and you know the taxi driver's name and you know you know you know how to get from a to b to c without too much trouble um because we're going to have that really powerful eclipse on on april 20th I would say be very careful about any kind of long distance travel at that time, because you know that the airlines are going to have difficulties with that kind of energy. April 20th for the eclipse. So like a week before, a week after. Just plan your early spring break travel. Right. (laughs) Not the late. or, Or do what some people do and go on a road trip. So many people have gone on a road trip and, you know, that's that's a great thing to do so um but then as as we move forward in may right with all that lovely taurus energy um it's gonna feel really rich i believe um 
Jupiter has just gone into Taurus uh, in mid-May um, and the sun is in Taurus um, in mid-May. The sun is in Taurus. Uh, we have a new moon in Taurus and, and Mercury is in Taurus moving forward and, and Venus is in. So that's all in May. Yeah. In so what does that translate that? <laughs> and Venus is in Cancer, loving all that Taurus energy. It's like you get together and you, you get together with Mary and you redesign your whole kitchen and you decide, oh yes, I want the pantry to look like this. And I want the kitchen counter to look like this. And oh, let's go shop for that wonderful uh, marble counter that I've always wanted, but I've been saving and saving and saving for it. And Mary knows the right, the right one to get for me. <laughs> oh, and hey, y'all heard it here. Call, right? Call and, and, um, I need a new wardrobe. Let's go for a wardrobe. Yay! Because during Mercury retrograde in Taurus in uh, April, in the beginning of May, it's like clean out your closet. So cleaning out your closet, organizing your home. Yeah. Um, yeah. And beautifying it, right? Beautiful. Just that at whole. The same time. Yeah. But wait for major purchases until Mercury goes direct. Because we tend to not see the fine print during Mercury retrograde, or they didn't even put it in a contract. <laughs> you know, it, it just things don't always. And if you do have to, let's say something breaks down like a refrigerator. Yeah, try buying a new car during Mercury retrograde. Hello. Yeah. Or, you know, Mercury retrograde in Taurus, a refrigerator. Let's say that the refrigerator breaks down, you have to get a new one. Keep your receipts. Keep your receipts just in case the ice machine in the refrigerator didn't work. Just be practical. It, but once that's done, then we have all this lovely earthy um, cancer is more about home and, and making things nurturing and, and you know having the family over for a lovely dinner and going on a beautiful family vacation and just having lovely time with family and friends oh, it's, it's a great energy it's a great energy going into the summer so so they're going to be so that's really beautiful times and march april is also a beautiful time just know that the eclipse period it's going to be that eclipse period. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to figuring out what that's going to be because April 20th is just five days before my birthday. And the sky is going to light up with the sun and the moon and Taurus square Pluto in Aquarius. So there's going to be some kind of pivotal lightning bolt that happens that clarifies things so that I and those of us who have Taurus in our charts can make positive changes for the better for the better so that's the way we need to look at this right yeah right and that also sounds kind of like a collective thing and very much uh, and expect currency changes at that time Ooh. currency even then mm -hmm. huh? yeah mm -hmm. okay that is very interesting. All right, so where 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 are we? Um, oh, you know what? Um, do people have questions? Yeah, did we talk? Did we talk about Saturn? <laughs> Saturn and Aquarius. Remember to to be careful with your psychic boundaries. Okay, and because is, because when I is mean, that? When Saturn moves into Pisces next month. Um, and um, Saturn will stay in Pisces, and Saturn will stay in Pisces for two and a half years. And it softens that that hard edge of you must do things this way. It softens that hard edge of it is my duty and therefore I have to. It makes people much more adaptable. It also makes us go for our inner authority. How much nicer is that versus the right, you know, will do it this way? Right? Yeah, it's, it's more like what does spirit tell me is the right thing at this time. And so how, that's Saturn in Pisces, Saturn in Pisces, which will be there for a few years. And when I am in sync with how spirit is speaking through me, not just to me, I will be at the right place at the right time with the right people serving because Pisces is about serving. Mm -hmm. you know, it's Kuan Yin. It's Kuan Yin energy. Yeah. And so that starts March 7th and then goes for two years. Is that what? Um... Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. All right. You, you heard it here. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So yeah, we have, we've got a question. Two questions, Mindy. Yes. So we're going to re repeat her question. Eclipses are always either the sun and the moon together, meaning the sun and the moon are together um, in front of the earth, like in between the sun and the earth, there's the moon. Okay, and we can't see the sun because the moon's in front of it. I don't know the exact timing of the eclipse. I'll have to look. I guess it depends on where you but are. Na the NASA site will tell us. So if you, yeah, if you look on the NASA site, they'll tell us exactly when it's going to be and where you can actually watch the eclipse. Oh, that's yeah. Um, also, okay. the second question is, is June a good month to travel? June. So the question is June a good month to travel. Okay, I'm taking out my to a wedding in about a week or so. Which is what what's the date, do? I think. Yeah. As far as I can see, everything's moving forward. Oh, oh my goodness. And you're going to a wedding? Uh -huh. oh, you're gonna have so much fun. Okay, so things are moving forward in June. That's when you make your travel plans. Jupiter in Taurus is in perfect alignment with Saturn in Pisces, perfect alignment, and it's about reconnections, Wonderful. family reconnections. Wonderful. Yeah, it's gonna oh. have a great time. Great. Have we got any questions online? You guys can put it in the chat. The, um, the chat question. Yeah, I will. Catherine, did you have a question? I don't know your name. Francisca. Francisca, do you have a question? Not that I can. I have a party, family, 90th birthday. Also that weekend as far as Oh, how wonderful. I don't know if I'm driving or flying, but it's good to hear it's a good time for it's a great time because it's family. Yeah. Mostly. Yes, it's a great time for, for traveling. Yeah. Okay, so if I had to recap, I would say, um, and I'll I'm gonna put this in my words, so but and then you can correct me, um, um, or and add to. So we are going to see a lot of change this year. Um, things are going to be expansive. Um, there's a lot of forward momentum. Um, we're going to see a breakdown of old structures and systems that do not work, probably connected to government money. Um, but also corporations. Corp of course. Well, the corporations <laughs> kind of all in collusion there, in my opinion. Yeah. So we're going to see a lot of change in all those sectors. Um, and continuing, ongoing, ongoing, right. And yeah, that we will have clarity around all that. And then sounds like I, I get the impression that kind of we're going to need community more than ever and kind of to follow our own truth, our Jupiter and Aries, right? Like what is, um, what works for us. Um, Absolutely. Well, the Jupiter and Aries in particular to get us started, Jupiter is in Aries to get our fires going, right? Um, I so love, we're going to get up off the couch. We're going to get up off the couch and move. <laughs> yeah. And literally move. Like I'm going to join a gym. And okay. Is when? Now. It's Jupiter, happening now. Jupiter went into Aries in December. Happening now. So, so we actually have energy again. And so the, the, okay, so I was telling you it's a 12 year cycle, beginning with Aries and ending with <laughs> Pisces, and Jupiter goes through a sign, you know, every year. So think about where you were 12 years ago. So oh, it was, at, well, at, well, I don't at, even at, know what year that was. <laughs> 20, 22. 2011? Would be 2011. No, 20, Guess what I was doing in 2011? 2010? Uh, I don't know. 2010. At the end of 20, um, in the middle of 2010, I'll tell you what happened to me. What happened to me was um, the Healing Collective, which is where I'm working now, had an office on Bissonette. They decided to build a, a healing center. Me, Taurus, said, mm -mm, I like it here. I like it here on Bissonette. And, well, at the time, Uranus, lightning striking, was in Aries. And um, and I just needed to individuate for a while. And I felt it and I was being true to myself. So I let my friends go off and build a healing center and I stayed where I was. And in 2011, I opened my own individual office in that same location. Okay. 
within their center? No, no, no. Within, within uh, the building on this and that. Okay. I, I, I individuated and I opened um, White Rose Wellness. Yeah. Right? I was there. And it was about a rose, a white rose, you know, my own pure connection with source. Okay. So, you know, 12 years later, guess what? I'm back at a healing collective because in the middle of, um, I was there for seven years. It was lovely. But then <laughs> um, Uranus hit Taurus and sat on my son and said, this, this, is not, this is not moving you forward the way you need to move forward. So we're going to completely raise to the ground the entire complex and you're going to have to move. <laughs> you have a month. Go find a place. <laughs> yeah. that, was, uh, that was right after Thanksgiving. So I picked up the phone and I called my friend and I said, do you still have room at a healing collective, which had moved to Bel Air Boulevard? And she said, what took you so long? <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I landed back at a healing collective where I had started in 2006. And, um, but I needed that little bit of time, that seven years, which is one quarter turn of Saturn, by the way, the seven year itch, it's about yeah. Saturn change. Mm -hmm. So I needed my own individual space for a while to individuate because I'm somebody who has a lot of Neptune energy in my chart. So is Mary. She's got Neptune in her first house. I have Neptune in the fourth house and we both really feel other people's energy. Right. <laughs> so there are times when we need to be by ourselves in order to figure out who I am again. But then the universe said, okay, time Time to go join your buddies, you know? Right. And I am in a similar space. I've individuated for a long time. Now I, I'm, you know, needing my community. I'm needing, needing that thing. So, so yes. So yes, finding your tribe and, and having it be true to your own authenticity. You know, the word sovereignty has been bandied about a lot, right? But it's real. We have to be on a, honoring of our own truth and our own sovereignty what am i here on the planet to be not just to do you know i am a light being on the planet and if i can't if i personally gandhari cannot be true to the light flowing through me then you know i I'm not happy, number one. And number two, I'm not here do, doing what spirit has guided me to do. So this is a year. Okay, so this is the fun part. Okay. This is the year where we get to, to really fine tune our soul's mission. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the only year, but it's the beginning. Oh, a wonderful astrologer I was listening to online said, it's the ending of the end of Pluto and Aquarius, of Pluto and Capricorn, the top-down structure, and it's the beginning of the beginning. This is a threshold year and a beautiful new light that's going to shine on the planet. And I also believe cosmically that we are going to start to be more cosmic galactic citizens we've known that we have been galactic citizens for a long time i'm a starseed i'm sure everybody sitting in this room is a starseed <laughs> light worker <laughs> right and so those of us who are vibrationally aligned oh my goodness i'm getting chills <laughs> there's going to be things that are going to be coming to us in new ways that we've never even imagined and we get to be here to be a part of the awakening. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what I think is so powerful about that beginning energy is like fresh, right? And, right. and, and if you allow yourself permission to be a beginner, then um, the door's wide open, right? You're not carrying all that baggage and all those identities and all that ego and all that whatever it's you're you're free to really experience things in a very different light so and it doesn't have okay 
it doesn't have to be weird. <laughs> it can be if you want it to be. But it, it doesn't it doesn't have to be sci-fi weird. You know, that don't it's important to to be really clear about who it is that we are and what's true for us and to not okay with mars still in gemini through um the middle of march there's the floodgates are open now because mars is moving forward and mercury's moving forward and so there's going to be even more information coming at us so it's it's really you know i'm kind of glad that mercury is slowly moving out of capricorn because capricorn doesn't take bullshit <laughs> it just does not it's like cut the crap i've got a job to do if you're not interested in being on my bandwagon then please leave you know so in a way that's very helpful because um like i've been you know i never delete stuff i've been deleting all kinds of stuff every single day on my computer i just delete 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 not mine not mine not mine not interested Right. And so now we have the permission to say, no, no, thank you very much. That's not true for me. Yeah. No, thank you very much. I'm not going in that direction. Very important. Right. We have a question. Um, what did you say is the perfect alignment in June? Oh, um, in mid that mid June when they were talking about Father's Day. Okay. Um, earth and water love working together. You know? The only time is that it gets stagnant is if there's no flow, right? And then it gets muddy and squishy. But most of the time, um, there's this lovely flow with earth and water. And I know Catherine is going to talk more about that with the elements um, next month, because it's going to be important to know our elements and how the elements are moving. Um, so, so just know that there's a beautiful flow um at that time in june and so it's a nice time to connect with people absolutely connect parties travel weddings um and relax it's june yeah 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 just enjoy enjoy okay excellent um this has been so informative and fun thank you okay. and um if you would like to book a session with gandhari you can email her um at gandhari b at gmail.com did you put that in the chat? It's in the chat. Awesome. And um, or you can call her um her number, which is in the chat as well. And so. um I we are going to email um the handout which has all of the dates and times and stuff that you need. Yeah. So Gandari did a very nice job, made a, a, a lovely handout. So um when we send out the recording, we'll include the um the handout for that and also have her her info um on there too. So <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, if we don't have any more questions, then I'm going to say um, thanks for joining us next. Um, yeah, yay. And um, if you would like to make a donation, we, what's our Zoom is, uh, <laughs> needs, we, we have some overhead costs. So I appreciate those that have made donations. Um, and I think in our e newsletter the email um it has a paypal link or um you can certainly send it to me or call me um i think you guys have all our information there but we appreciate the donations that makes this possible for us to to do this and next month we have a wonderful treat um catherine ashby feng shui master will be talking about the year of the water rabbit um so stay tuned all right see you next time um thanks so much Everybody's saying thank you. All right. Namaste. Namaste.